Hello, and welcome to my podcast, Good Grief. My name is Dr. Christine Malone, and in this podcast, we talk about trauma, tragedy, and survival. In each episode, I will interview someone that has gone through grief in some way, and we will discuss the impact it has had on their life. By sharing these stories, we hope that others won't feel alone should they be going through similar situations. Enjoy. Okay. Listeners, thank you so much for joining me today. My guest in this podcast is going to talk about a traumatic event that uh, she experienced uh, a few years ago. So guest, if you would like to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your story. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Tamara Fox, and I'm a health and wellness coach. I'm currently 31 today, but when I was 19 years old, I was living in downtown Denver in Colorado. And I woke up in the middle of the night to a masked man standing over my bed with a gun who proceeded to ask me where the safe was in my apartment and held the gun to my head and told me if I screamed, he would kill me. After I spent what felt like years talking to him, he um, and I could smell the alcohol on his breath, he proceeded to rape me before finally leaving my apartment after he did choose to also physically abuse me. He dislocated my arm. He left bruises on my neck and my throat and, or sorry, my neck and uh, my mouth. Um, And then finally did leave before I managed to escape and go to the hospital. Wow. That's, that's, that's like the stuff on law and order. That's what that, what that is. So, um, once you experienced that, um, talk to me about kind of your, your trust issues and things like mean, how did your life change uh, for you both emotionally and physically after that? Sure. So I definitely saw my life, life flash before my eyes when that happened. I saw memories of my childhood pop up, my grandparents, my brothers, my parents. I saw a lot of things that I had never like relived and I truly thought I was going to die. So after that had happened, I was numb in a way, like operating within the world, not knowing what was going on, but just existing. And I was terrified. I was afraid of everywhere I went, he would find me or he would know who I was, even though I believe he had the wrong um, apartment and the police believe that as well, based off of him asking for a safe. And I didn't have a safe. I was 19 years old and worked in a restaurant. So it was very difficult for me to not only function, but believe people were good to have an experience where some complete stranger potentially wants to end your life and then takes complete advantage of you at such a young age when the world felt so full of opportunities and so wonderful and positive was very difficult, especially given I grew up in a very safe town in Colorado. I was very fortunate. There was not a lot of crime. I had never seen things like that. Like you said, it's something you'd see on Law and Order. So I believed at that age that that type of stuff only happened on TV. And then to firsthand experience it myself and have to start telling others, like my friends who were freshmen in college with me, what I had gone through was very, that was probably the most difficult was telling my friends and family what I had experienced because the look on their faces was almost worse than the pain that I was feeling. Yeah, and I've heard that before um, in any kind of traumatic event where people just don't know what to say or what to do or how to how to react. So that was going to be the next question I had for you is what um, what was that like? I mean, did you have people you could talk to or to just feel like I can't talk about this because they won't understand or they're uncomfortable and therefore you keep it to yourself? Yeah, it was a combination of kind of all of the above. I'm a very transparent, um, pretty outgoing person naturally. And I did share with a lot of people because I like, especially like close friends and family, because I wanted them to be able to understand and support me the best that they could, even if the best that they could was not necessarily how I needed. (laughs) Um, It was still them doing the best with what they knew. So I told like close friends, my family members, but their reactions were very deer in the headlights, for lack of better words, a lot of people wouldn't respond at all. It's almost like I told them something and they just sat there in silence and looked at me. Some people immediately jumped into what a lot of people do when you experience any type of trauma or grief with, I'm so sorry, are you okay? Like the the standard questions that people tend to get. Um, And I, I obviously went through a ton of therapy at the time and I worked with 
the victims advocacy in Denver, Colorado, and a few other just like support networks and groups in order to be able to talk about it and get through it. Yeah, I'm glad you did that. So could be another question is if you were able to find um, a support network or professional assistance and so on. So it sounds like you did do all of that. Um, so how, it's been 10 years now. So how do 12 you years. feel? Or 12, okay, 12 years, 12 years now. So how, uh, what do you, what have you learned about that whole experience and how you've survived it um, that you use today? You mentioned doing your coaching business and so on. So how have you really incorporated those experiences into um, what you do and how you help others? Sure. So at first I, even though I was in therapy and other groups and support with my family and friends, I still felt so frustrated and so alone that I experienced this extremely traumatic event by myself and nobody knew what I was going through. I got through it myself. I'm the only reason I got out of that. So there were so many moments and actually years of time where I was I felt very isolated because I was 19 years old. I had taken time off of college after. And when I returned to school, I felt so different than everyone around me who was, I returned when I was about 20. So everyone who around me was 20 years old. I mean, when you're 20 years old in college, they always say college is the best four years of your life. For me, it was probably some of the worst four years of my life because I had such severe PTSD. I had such bad anxiety and depression And there were times actually write about this in the blog that I have when I talk about my story that I actually couldn't sleep. I got a German shepherd shortly after that my dad kind of pushed me to get, which is one of the best things I think he ever did for me for protection. Because my biggest thing shortly after was I didn't feel safe in my home, which is where most people feel the safest. So I couldn't sleep at night. And often when I would sleep, I wouldn't fall asleep until the sun had come come up because I was so afraid of the nighttime because this happened during the night. So from I'd say years like 19 to probably 21, I was pretty broken. I I think I was I was very fragile with everything. I would get panic attacks out in public with my friends. I would be afraid to go do things. I'd be afraid to go um, places alone. I would want to bring my dog with me if I was going places. So it was this very odd dynamic of I finally had independence as a, a young college student. And I was supposed to be out doing all of these fun things with my friends, but I felt afraid to do that and scared to do a lot of that. And then after I'd say about age 21, I met my ex-boyfriend when I was 21. And I think that's when I really started to feel like I was coming out of a lot of the pain. And I was not that I was healed by any stretch, because I think healing is something we end up doing our entire lives when we go through something traumatic. But I felt that I was at a slightly more normal place where I could do things at night with friends and not have panic attacks. And I could have a relationship um, with my boyfriend and not be afraid of, you know, a strange man because he was at one point a a stranger to me before I had met him. Where prior to that, I was terrified of of strange men who are stranger men, strangers who were men because of what had happened. So around 21, like I said, I did slowly feel like I was turning a corner. I was in school. I was working full time. And the pain had lifted, but the therapy and the healing was still as thick. I was still on a lot of prescriptions. My sleep was still not great. I still was healing in a lot of ways. And I got very into exercise and physical fitness in order to find other ways to move the stress out of my body. And from there, I continued to heal. Um, And now I would say I'm at a place where, as you mentioned, I do the coaching. I I shifted into the coaching as one of those pain into purpose stories. I wanted to help anyone else who felt alone, regardless of how they felt alone, but looking at that from that holistic view. Because for me, the way I found true healing for me was looking at my body and my mind and spiritually and everything holistically. How am am I eating? How am I sleeping? What does my exercise look like? What does my lifestyle look like? How am I taking care of myself? That truly allowed me to heal holistically. And around about 2016, I want to say, is when I went off of prescriptions. um, And I wasn't able to do that through, again, this, this holistic healing, which is where I'm at today. And I'm very grateful and thankful that today, again, I'm 31. I'm not on prescriptions, haven't been on prescriptions for years. I don't have the anxiety or um, PTSD symptoms like I used to, but I can still get triggered. 
Whereas when I was 19, 21, even in my early 20s, I would get triggered much more easily than I do now. Um, But again, it came through a lot of really hard work and therapy. I have my own coach, all of these different things, um, and not being afraid to One, talk about it to those who I love and love me and to continue to do the work, which is sometimes the hardest part. Yeah. And you mentioned the triggers. So I I call those triggers um, my buttons. And in my classes that I teach, I, I, my students are going into healthcare and I always say, you know, you know where your buttons are because you have them. We all have them. We've all been through something and know by knowing those things, you can kind of try to not put yourself in a position where you're going to be triggered. So if it is, you know, a certain situation, a certain place, whatever, to just not do that um, because those triggers will, will happen and avoiding them is, is kind of, um, has always been my goal with that too. So, so tell us more about your, your coaching business. What, what's it called and, and what exactly do you offer to people um, that are, you know, in need of, of a coach? Sure. So it's called Awaken Empowerment. I started it with thinking of how to do empowerment coaching. One of the items I've been told since I was 19 years old by everybody who I meet or who knows me pretty well is how resilient I am and my ability to truly get through anything. So I, it, I focus on health and wellness coaching, but truly for me, coaching brings in a lot of dis- different aspects. As I talked about earlier, it's that holistic view of how are we helping people and what does that look like? Looking at things like um, your physical health, your mental health, financial health, spiritual health, like it's the holistic health, the holistic person. Um, I work mainly with yeah. Uh, Go ahead. uh, It's okay. I work mainly with women. I will work with um, any gender, but I I typically tend to attract women who a lot of which have been through something traumatic. I wouldn't say that's like a requirement by any stretch. There are no requirements to work with me. I will work with whoever wants to work with me, who is truly passionate, engaged, and excited about the work and truly wanting to get from point A to point B and feel stuck. And I tend to work with a lot of women who have experienced something traumatic and have gone through similar phases like I have. They've either gone through therapy and that's not where they are anymore. They want to focus more on the future and solutions and how to move through different things in their life, whether that's they don't feel good or um, losing weight or getting a better diet or you know, thinking through how they can have different relationships. So I'll work with people again when it comes to that holistic well-being of their life. And there are times though, just given again, my experience that the trauma does come in and we, we talk about how that affects them. So I will, again, as I said, I will work with anyone, but I tend to just work with a lot of women and I get a lot of joy out of helping people prior. And I also have another job, but prior, I started my career in human resources when I was in my early twenties, cause I wanted to help people. And then figured out that, and then when I started my blog in 2020, I did that because I was finally at a place where I was like, okay, I want to share my story and make people, make sure people don't feel alone. And I can really do that in a more intimate way with the health and wellness coaching in one-on-one settings, helping anyone who works with me, not feel alone, feel seen, and then feel better, which at the end of the day, we all want to feel good and be happy. So true. Um, I love the, that you have the empowerment in your in your coaching title. Um, so, what is is your blog titled the same the same as the coaching title? Yes, yes. Okay. So my website's a little under construction. I can give the link for everybody to click to because it's a a longer link. I have to refix that. But yeah, my blog is also called Awaken Empowerment. I started that in 2020 when I was finally feeling like I was at a place to share my story. For most of my life, there were a lot of people who didn't know what happened to me outside of my friends and family and close those close to me. My coworkers didn't know, or a few would, but not all. And just other people I had come in contact with didn't know. So I started the blog in 2020, I think actually right before COVID, with the confidence that I finally felt empowered to share my story as I was always in fear prior that the man who attacked me was going to find me if I publicly spoke about it. So by doing the blog, I was finally putting my name to my story and my face to my story and sharing that to help people not feel alone. And it, it's actually been very, how, is that, how has that made you feel? Do you feel like it's, it's accomplished what you were hoping to with how, how it makes you feel? Yes, I would say it gave me a lot I like that. Again, that's why the, the title Awaken Empowerment, it, that starting the blog and doing the coaching did that for me as well. It created that 
empowerment for me to feel better. I had a lot of people reach out to me after the blog saying, I shared this with a friend who experienced something and this will help them. And again, I wrote, I started the blog and started the coaching so people didn't have to feel alone. And my goal was even if I could just help one person, I I knew I did what was right. Yeah, that's great. I know you also mentioned that you are working on a book. So do you think you'll have that written and ready to go anytime soon? I don't think it will be anytime soon. I know I have a lot of other, between the the years of 2016 and 2022, I experienced seven deaths and have some other things in my life that I have to keep writing about. So my blog has been a lot about my story and a few of those deaths, but my book will truly be about my life kind of, you know, childhood, but really starting with what happened to me these past 12 years. And I'm hoping that'll be like the next five years. So long-term goal, but I'm excited for it. Yes. Well, as I shared with you, I I published mine and I am, I am very happy that I did. It was very helpful for me in, in healing things that I haven't had even thought about for maybe 50 something years in my case. So that was um, great. And I, again, encourage you to to do that. Uh, one thing I'll say is if you're going to wait until, uh, you know, you, you got all, all of your life story done, then you're looking at writing it way later in life. <laughs> Whereas, you know, you can write about what's happened now, maybe even put out a, a sequel, I guess, if you've got other things to add later on. So yeah, but great for good for you. So Tamara, do you have anything else you'd like to add for this um, interview? I don't think at this time, I guess, I guess the only thing I would share with your listeners is that it's possible to go through something extremely, extremely traumatic and come out the other side, a person that you never imagined you could be. I constantly have people tell me that both like really close, like my brothers and my mom and people that I'm very close with tell me like, I'm so strong. They have no idea how I'm I'm doing what I'm doing and, and living the success that I am given what I went through at such a young age. So regardless of when you went, like when anyone has gone through an experience, I do want them to know it is possible to come out the other side, a person that they may not have wanted to be in originally, but a person that they can become that is something amazing. Oh, I completely agree with you. I, I, I always tell people you're, you're going to be different. You'll never be the same, but it doesn't mean you can't be fantastic. So yeah, exactly. I appreciate that mission. That's a great one. Well, Tamara, thank you so much for meeting with me today. I enjoyed talking to you and your enthusiasm and your energy is wonderful. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Good Grief. To hear more about my personal story, please pick up a copy of my book, The Day I Became the Spider Killer, a memoir of trauma, tragedy, and survival, available in paperback, Kindle, and Audible via Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other online book retailers.